to feud hosts die on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is June 2nd, 2023. It is the 153rd day of the year. You got 212 days left in 2020. It's the 22nd Friday in the 22nd week. In the 75th day of spring, you got 19 days left until summer. Today is National Donut Day, one of my personal favorite days. National Donut Day falls on the first Friday in June each year, and we are getting geared up to savor the best loved fried dough confection. I don't know about the word confection. I don't know what it is. I don't like that word. I don't like the word foodie. All right, moving on. Let's see what else June 2nd has given us. 1910, Charles Rolls, a co-founder of Rolls-Royce Limited, becomes the first man to make a non-stop double crossing of the English Channel in a plane. 1919, anarchists simultaneously set off bombs in eight separate U.S. cities. 1924, U.S. President Calvin Coolidge signs the Indian Citizenship Act into law, granting citizenship to all Native Americans born within the territorial limits of the United States. Hard to believe they weren't just automatically citizens. We actually had to pass something that said they were. 1941, World War II, German paratroopers murder Greek civilians in two different villages. Now, this was pretty sad. When the Germans started attacking Greece, a lot of the people living on the islands were attacking them as they were landing. So this turned into a whole big thing, and they ordered the death of civilian males. 1967, protests in West Berlin against the arrival of the Shah of Iran are brutally suppressed. During the suppression, one civilian is killed by a police officer. The death resulted in the founding of the terrorist group Movement 2 June. 1983, after an emergency landing because of an in-flight fire, 23 passengers on board Air Canada Flight 797 are killed when a flashover occurs as the plane's doors open. Because of this incident, numerous new safety regulations are put in place. So this flight was leaving Dallas on its way to Toronto with its final destination being Montreal. They didn't have that many people, maybe 40, 50 people on the plane. It was about half full for this flight. About halfway into the flight, there was a little bit of a burning plastic smell coming out of what appeared to be the back restroom. At the time, people were still sneaking into the bathroom to smoke and things like that. So it wasn't unusual to have some kind of smell coming back there. They tell the head steward, he comes back, he sprays down the whole bathroom with a fire extinguisher and then closes it off and figure that's going to solve the problem. Wouldn't be the first time someone threw a cigarette into a trash can or something like that. They come and they tell the pilot what's going on and the second mate or co-pilot decides he's going to go back and take a look. So he goes back. It's a bit of a smoky situation. There's now smoke filling up the cabin. He comes back and tells the pilot they decide they're going to land. A few minutes later, the head steward comes back and says, you know what? We took care of it. There's no more smoke. I think we're good. So they just assume that's what it was. Someone either flushed a cigarette, someone kind of put one out someplace and it just kind of went away because they sprayed the fire extinguisher wasn't the case at all. A few minutes later, the smoke started back up and it was really filling up the cabin at this point. So they were request emergency landing at the nearest airport and the air traffic control asked if they can make Cincinnati, which they agreed and they headed for Cincinnati. As they started to descend, they noticed that they didn't have a lot of power to a lot of different parts of the plane anymore. This was obviously electrical fire and things were out of commission, including part of his horizontal stabilizer, the part that basically points the plane down like if you want to land it. The pilot eventually gets the elevators to work, which kind of do the same thing, just not as efficient, and they start to descend. About this time, all their power goes out to their controls. So it's almost like your car, the power steering goes out, now you gotta muscle everything. Well, that's what they were doing. By the time they descend and get near the airport, the entire plane is so filled with smoke, they could barely see out the windows. But the pilot and co-pilot do a masterful job and get the plane on the ground. Soon as they do, they open up the doors, they put down the ramps, and people start jumping out. The plane is so filled with smoke, people can't tell which direction is which. They can't even see the light coming in that the doors are open. Now, keep in mind, this is about 7 at night, so I'm sure there wasn't a whole bunch of light streaming into the plane. People weren't attached to oxygen. They were choking. They couldn't move. Some people just sat in their seats. The fire department had got there and they're spraying down the plane. People are flooding off. It's only been on the ground for about two minutes at this point. They realize the pilot is still sitting in his seat. He's out of it because of the smoke. He's confused. The firemen actually sprayed into the little window that the co-pilot had escaped from and woke the captain up. He jumped out the window. He was the last one. Including the crew, there was 46 people on the plane. 
only 23 survived. Exactly half. 2012, former Egyptian President Hansi Mubarak is sentenced to life in prison for his role in the killing of demonstrators during the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. This was a crazy time in the Middle East. It was all part of the Arab Spring, the protests at least. People in Arab countries had had enough. They were upset about the energy crisis, authoritarianism, absolute monarchy, demographic structural factors, human rights violations, inflation, political corruption, and massive poverty. There's still parts of it going on right now. The Syrian civil war, problems in Yemen and Libya, these are all part of what started during the Arab Spring. I find this whole thing fascinating. This is almost like a second deep dive for this one, but this is what happened. In Tunisia, President Zain El Abin Ben Ali was ousted, charged, exiled, and the government was overthrown. Egypt, like we said, he was arrested, he was ousted, the government was overthrown. In Libya, leader Muammar Gaddafi, following an eight-month civil war that saw a foreign military intervene and the government overthrown, he was killed by the people. Yemen, Yemen's president was ousted and power was handed over to a national unity government. Syria, like I said, they still got problems going on there. Bahrain, civil uprising against the government crushed by authorities. Saudi Arabia had to intervene in that one. Kuwait, Lebanon, and Oman saw the writing on the wall and implemented serious changes in the government. Morocco, Algeria, and Jordan, they had constitutional reform. And then every other country over there like Djibouti, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, United Arab Emirates, Sudan, and Palestine, they all had protests. I honestly don't think here in the Western world, we don't realize how big of a deal that was. They just got tired of dictators, and the internet helped them bring it all together. Premiered on June 2nd, 2002, The Wire. Set in Baltimore, the lives of cops, drug dealers, government officials, and those in the media are explored. This was a great series. Probably one of my favorite series after The Sopranos that HBO ever put out. It lasted five seasons and they made 60 episodes. What's incredible about this one, it's told through several different stories. And even though there's villains in this one, they did it in such a way you start to like these villains, even though maybe they're horrible people. It's really weird. If you ever get a chance, check that out. The creator, David Simon, worked as a journalist for the Baltimore Sun before working for the show. The show never won any awards while it was on the air, which I find incredibly tragic. Born on June 2nd, 1979, Morena Baccarin. She's an actress known for her series regular roles as Anna in V, Jessica Brody in Homeland, Inara in Firefly, Dr. Leslie Tompkins in Gotham. She's also been in the film Spy, and she's played a reoccurring role in the two Deadpool movies. She's gorgeous. She attended Juilliard School, which led her to her first role in the 2001 film Perfume. She was born in Brazil, Rio de Janeiro, actually. Her father was an Italian journalist and her mother was a actress in Brazil. She's Brazilian. Died on June 2nd, two people. 2012, we lost Richard Dawson. He was a comedic actor and was the original host of the game show Family Feud. He was also in Hogan's Heroes and all these other things. Now, what's interesting, in 1996, we lost Raymond Combs Jr. or Ray Combs Jr. He was famous for being the second host of Family Feud from 1988 to 1994. In 1994, Combs was involved in a serious accident on the Ventura Freeway in Southern California. He sustained injuries in one of his spinal discs, leaving him with severe continuous pain. Combs also struggled with financial problems after the failure of two comedy clubs. Caddy Combs, and Cincinnati Comedy Connection. In September of 1995, he separated from his wife Debbie of 18 years, and the couple attempted to reconcile a few times, but later refiled for divorce. Ray made several attempts to resurrect his career. It had been going downhill since he was replaced on Family Feud, and he just wasn't able to recover. The police got a call to his house on June 1st, 1996, and they found that he had pretty much destroyed his entire house and been banging his head against the wall. So his ex-wife showed up and she said that he was basically in bad shape, and they took him for a 72-hour psychiatric observation. And on June 2nd, 1996, around 4.10 a.m., hospital personnel discovered Ray Combs hanging by bedsheets in the closet of his room. He was only 40 years old. Richard Dawson, on the other hand, lived to the grand old age of 79. He died from mono, you know, the kissing disease? And that's only funny to anyone that ever watched Family Feud. Actually, he died of complications from cancer. 
All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.